So what happened? What did you do? Um, well, it it wasn't. I got phoned up by Andy one day. I was getting. I you know, I'd been brought to the to the edge of penury. I'd poured. This is my last ditch. Remember, I'm now, I'm now about thirty two. So I'm thinking, right. One last go at this. I'm sleeping under the mix mixing desk, living on about 60 quid a week, because I never would sign on. And um, I was just getting iller and tireder all the time. I was writing Captain's album with him. I was writing the next Cleaners from Venus album and making the second one and helping Voice of America out with their stuff. And I just, I was that keen. I just worked myself to a frazzle, became ill. And it got to the point where Spring of 88, I think I, I did get quite a nasty flu, which knocked me for six for four weeks. Very unlike, laid me out. And then I got a phone call as soon as I was I got myself a labouring job. I was doing demolition with a builder friend of mine. And I was enjoying it. I was getting healthy again. I was getting paid proper wedge. And there was a phone call on the site where I was working. It was Annie McQueen. We've organised a 20-day German tour for you with RCA. I was like, right. Um, I would like 75 quid per musician to cover rehearsals, because we can't just go and do this call, we're going to have to rehearse it, per week or parts thereof for every week we rehearse. And then I want 150 a week for each musician per week or parts thereof for every week that we're on tour, estimated to be three weeks. Because we have dogs, children um, and families and houses and rents to pay. And we can't just, he said you can get PDs, that means for the layman per diems, it means you've beer and fags money, about 15 quid a day. And I said, no, if we're with RCA Germany, we had X amount. Uh, I did what all good, good British workmen do, I went on strike. I said, I'm not doing it. The rest of the musicians went apeshit, of course, they wanted to be pop stars. But I said, no, you should be getting paid. We're doing a man's job, you should be getting paid. Otherwise, what's the point? I can get 300 quid a week knocking buildings down or, or doing gardens or fixing fences. So he said, what are you going to do? I said, stay here and do this. I'm getting a suntan, I'm healthy, I can go to the pub at the end of the night. So that's what I did. And, but they said, well, we've got to do a tour. So I said, well, you know, I don't know, get some other patsy to do it, you know, for the madhouse. I'm not doing it. They thought I'd gone mad. I think I'd gone sane. Why? You know, and so Smith went out, I said, with my blessing. And I trained another guitarist, and he went out and did my chops. And I didn't do it. So he did the singing for you, did he? Yeah. yeah, and Giles did. Yeah, yeah. But they got to Berlin and the fans were calling out my name. But I just, I will not. Yeah. There's this idea that the music industry has somehow got some kind of droit de seigneur where it doesn't have to behave like a normal business. Of course, though, its chief resources are free. Its victims willingly hurl themselves into the machine. You can't well. say, you know, I did. I don't say, oh, I've had a hard time in the music industry. There are no victims. It's only the carrots that's dangled and they... Uh, yeah, there's no victims, yeah. only volunteers. But the greed and rapacity with which certain businessmen seize upon this, this, this willing young flesh is, you know, also reprehensible. But you shouldn't do it... I used to do it by anger, but now I just sort of satirise it. There is a grand comedy to be made out of it. Anyway, to keep it sequential for the moment... Mm -hmm. That was your, after your speech there, okay. Yeah. So we go on to the Brotherhoods of Lizard. Yeah. yeah? Which was presumably, you were on the well, building again. site, you were getting fit and getting some money, <laughs> and something lured so, you out. Somebody thought, <laughs> I have another bit of a go. this time, uh, Nell, who'd also left the cleaners from Venus. This is so Nelson. Nelson, who plays with New yeah. Model Army, the yeah. New Model Army, who'd yeah. left the cleaners from Venus, um, came round to my house and we were doing some recording. He was helping me out, but the sound got quite good. And then that Christmas, uh, Captain Sensible lent me his eight track Tascam thing because he had gone up to a 16. So I inherited his, his old cast off eight for a while, which was jolly good actually, and made a little studio. And Noel and I made a record. And then poor old tired Andy McQueen, who'd, who knew me well, believed in my talent as a songwriter. He was just thinking, Dare I ask? Because <laughs> he did come good in the end, Andy. And he just said, um, I don't suppose there's the remotest chance you'll be touring this album, will you, Martin? And I said, um, by bicycle, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, how will that happen? And I said, well, I've looked at a radio map of England and we could cycle from Colchester to Bury St Edmunds one day and we'd do Bury St Edmunds to Peterborough and we can work our way right across west 
And then if we had the backup, and if someone had paid, so instead of paying four musicians and getting a transit van and four hotel bills, you just have to pay two musicians, get us some decent bikes, set the radios up, we'll busk in the streets, we get loads of publicity. And I was right. So halfway through the tour, which was October 1989, he got a phone call from Dave Stewart of the Eurythmics, who said, are those two lunatics out there on bicycles anything to do with you? <laughs> and he said, yes, it was all my idea, of course. But it, actually, I mean, he did encourage it, and, and there was a very good... Um, he had a really good uh, PR in the, in the um, PA in, in his office called Karen Malcolm, who was really on the ball. She phoned people up and got us radio gigs and things. So we got six televisions out of it and ended up on telly with, with um, uh, Andrew Morton, the Royal Biographer, and Paul Hill of the Guildford Four, who'd recently come out of Nick after 15 years on Derek Jameson's Sky TV sort of Happy Shopper Terry Wogan show, which we did. And I got mistaken for Paul Hill because <laughs> I looked gaunt and thin, you know, because Derek Jameson comes in, I'm sitting in his chair in the, off in the makeup room and he goes, well, I'm sorry, sorry, I've got to have a breath of makeup, doesn't <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Derek. He said, that's all right, Paul, I'll see you next time. I said, oh, I'm not Paul, I'm Martin. And I'm going over to him now. I said, why does he think I'm Paul? And, he's, and Andy says, well, maybe he looks like you. <laughs> he thinks you look like you've just got out of prison, Martin, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I said, it was the first time I've been mistaken for an innocent man, then. <laughs> So um, the Brotherhood of Lizards petered out even then because it didn't peter out. Now somebody, a guy called Anton Pace, who was working at uh, EMI, who was a sort of trouble fixer and song fixer and everything like that, just suddenly remembered Nell from Colchester and just said, Nell, he will do it. Because Nell is kind of like an Ian Botham of music. He's just brilliant at everything. Yeah, so. And um, I said, I'm maybe a bit of a better keyboard player than him. But apart from that, he's just good at everything. And um, he just said, I said, you've got to do it. We were cycling across Salisbury Plain at the time. Been a long silence for a while, and I said, you're going to have to take it. Be, you know, it'll be 150, 200 quid a week. And, you know, Brother of Lizards is never going to pay you that. And then about half an hour later, he goes, yeah, I know. Like that. So, <laughs> but he said, but I won't necessarily yet. I said, you will, you will have the cock crew three times. I never held it against him because he's a good bloke. And, of course, he ends up again with me in Japan, you know. Playing with Newell's Alien All Stars. So, I'm trying to guide you through yeah, the okay, career. Yeah, okay, we've been here. through the Brotherhood of Lizards. And uh, then you had a bit of a break from music, I think, for yeah. a time, and you got more into I poetry. I was so hacked off at, by, by April, and I went to sensible. I went with Sensible to France, and T V Smith made Sensible, and T V Smith from the Airbus. Yeah, yeah, and his band, and we went there, and we did a week in in Paris in a res a residency during which time we got thrown out of two hotels because of Sensible's habit of eating oranges and crumbly bread on the bed, even though he's asked not to by the French hotelier. I mean, we had a residency. We, we could have stayed in the same hotel. It would have been great, but that mm -hmm. didn't sort of happen. And, um, <laughs> but, but you, so you then started to be a poet. And I came it? back, yes, because yeah. I'd won a poetry competition. Yeah. And I brought the clipping back. It was a great big clipping in one of the yeah. regional newspapers saying that I was the Essex Poet of the Year. No one was more surprised than I was, but I didn't go to the ceremony because I thought I'd have to stand next to loads of old ladies and five-year-old kids who'd also got prizes, and I didn't know I'd won it. I just, I'd just been told I'd won a prize. Yeah. So then it came out, and the people who organised it were really cross with me for not turning up. And um, I brought the clipping home to, you know, to the guys at the record company, and I went, oh, it's a bit of an odd, odd one, isn't it, Martin? Winning a poetry competition. I didn't think about it. Then I started. But you were already a very good lyricist, though. So the, yeah, but the I, groundwork was there somehow. I didn't equate them as being the same thing. And I had written one, one or two articles. It was like, you know, the supreme being was trying to say, look, you are re definitely, you know, wasting your time doing music. But if you do writing, lots of work and money will come. But I'm thinking, no, 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 look, I'm, I'm a rock star. Look, I can still pout. And, um, you know, it's pathetic, really. What I should have done was just, you know, put everything away. But in the end, I'd, I'd such a, it was such a blow when Noel left New Model Army and then all these people who said, oh, we can keep you going, this will still happen. And then they didn't. I just put my instruments away for six months. And right. I thought, that's it, I'm going to be a gardener. At least I'll be happy. Yeah. So? So I became a gardener. Yeah. 